Good evening and welcome back to Prime of Midlife. Um, this is probably going to be quite a long video, so get yourself a cuppa, get yourself settled. Especially if your home has been flooded, because that's what we're talking about. Um, obviously, down in here in the UK, down south, um, there have been some serious floods. Um, many, many houses have been flooded people not able to live in them and that's kind of part of what I do as part of my work so I thought I would give you just a hint of what may happen this is not going to happen for everyone um, but it gives you a rough idea of what the procedure is so let's start with your house has been flooded you phone your insurers they normally what they'll do is they'll send out a surveyor, an insurance surveyor, to have a look and see what damage has been done. Now, any survey that gets done to your property is what is called non-intrusive. They're not going to lift floors, they're not going to lift vinyl, they're not going to lift carpets. Um, they're not going to pull bits of walls off or anything like that. It's basically going to be what they can see. Um... And so they will then put a report into insurers. And then what happens is insurers put it out to a contractor. And the contractor will also come out and have a look because they build houses, they fix houses. So they know um, things like if you've got old flooring, and the water's come in, then it's probably gone through to the joists, etc. How long's your house been standing in water? Okay, that's going to damage it. How much silt has there been, etc., etc. So the contractor will then put together what is called a scope of works, and that is what they think needs to be done to get your house back to what it was. Be under no illusions. This is not an upgrade in your house. This is getting it back to what it was originally. So that's the very, very basics. Now, once the contractor's put forward what he thinks is going to happen, insurers may offer you what they call a cash settlement and say, right, this is what it's going to cost us to get it done. So this is what we're offering to pay you. If you want to use your own contractors, like if you have family and friends that are in the contracting business um, or, you know, local guys, get yourself a quote because insurers have specific rates that they use and they get renewed every year. And of course now, with the problems with the Red Sea, with transport, problems with costs, um, things might be a bit more expensive than the rates would normally cover. So get yourself a couple of quotes. Now, that's the very basics of how that part works. And that will probably take quite a while because there's a lot of flooded houses just now. What you can do to help yourself, take loads of photographs of the damage. Take loads of photographs. Now, I, I work with buildings, not contents, but I know that for contents, um, you need to be able to show that that's what you had if insurers are going to replace it. So anything electrical, like your TV, um, your computers, your laptops, take pictures of the labels, take pictures of the brand, the make and the model, etc. In situ. Um, don't get rid of anything. I mean, if you have to take stuff out of the house, stick it in your garden um, because they may want proof that you did have that. So don't throw stuff out immediately. Um, your house is going to have to be emptied of the contents and it may take a while for someone from insurers to be able to come and make a list. So make sure you've got a list. And for everything that you list, make sure you take a photograph. Prove it. It's one of the biggest things in insurers. And don't get me wrong, insurers are quite happy. You know, it's like for like basis. You know, if, if they can see that you had that, then they will happily replace that. What they won't do is if you've got a... Rocco telly and you suddenly say oh it's bang Olufsen I want they're not going to pay for that you'll get a Rocco telly 
or Samsung or whatever it was. Um, so all those sorts of things, you need to make a record, you need to have lists, you need to have photographs. Now, there's also the fact of once the contractors put in their, their quote, if you say to insurers, I'm happy for your contractor to do it, um, then they will normally ask you what materials you want. Now, that is things like what colour of paint do you want in your walls? What tiles do you want to replace the ones that are going to have to get taken off? You don't have to worry about how many square metres or whatever. You just choose what you want. And as long as it's similar to what you had, that shouldn't be a problem. Then the contractor will get that ordered. Then they need to find people. Now, this is where it's going to become a bit of a problem for quite a few people. Depending on where you are, depending on how many homes have been flooded, there's only so many contractors. There's only so many tradesmen. And they can't do them all at once. And sometimes, yes, you can complain and they'll go, oh, just do that one to shut them up. Doesn't always work like that. Um, we actually ended up the last surge, which is what it's called when there's a whole lot of stuff going on. Um, we had so many people thinking that if they complained, their thing would get done early. Top of our list were people in palliative care. Now, we're a small company, we would three, who were desperate to get home. They wanted to be home for their last days. So they got prioritised. And it doesn't matter how much somebody else shouted and complained. It's not happening. So, yes, you can do that. You're actually more liable to get help if you are respectful and nice to the staff in the call centre. Because they'll remember you for nice reasons. So that's always something to do. I mean, don't get me wrong, things go wrong. And yes, sometimes you do have to complain. But please do remember that there are hundreds and hundreds of houses have been flooded this week. They can't fix them all at the same time. So the best thing you can do to help yourself is make sure that you have a record of everything. Take lots of photographs. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... Make a list of what's been damaged. Take photographs and make a model, etc, etc. Have a think of what you need to replace it. And also check your um, insurance policy. Um, because having like for like matching items. Matching items in your policy is a big thing. If you don't have that, they will only replace what's damaged. And in other times, they will only replace what's damaged anyway. So if you say, oh, but, you know, the hallway was, although it turns a corner, the hallway was all matched. No, it's only around here that it's damaged. We're not touching that bit. There's nothing wrong with it. That's how it works. But yeah, anyone who's had any problems with their property, with the flooding, I just thought I would come on and give you some basic information. It's not going to get fixed quickly. There's too many. The, you know, insurers can't do it. The contractors can't do it. The guys can only work so many hours a day. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed. But certainly start making yourself lists and start taking photographs. Now I'm going to make a cup of tea to try and stop this cough. Catch you later.